Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-65. The last time we listened in, the party had faced more dark dwellers in the small dungeon that they had located. After defeating everything they had faced, they took a small respite in the old throne room. Karina the Waif had recovered from her near-death experience and went to go get water for the group. Cabe informed the party that he had uncovered a great deal of information in the old journal that he had recovered, but his big reveal was broken up as Karina returned as a prisoner of an orc warchief. The humanoid demanded the party disarm themselves and was moving towards the pile of weapons. We rejoin them now as he studies the cache. I'm sorry guys, he came up from behind me, said a dejected Karina. The group shook their heads indicating that she wasn't to blame. The greed in the eyes of the orc distracted him long enough for Cabe to tell the group he was going to try something. Despite the obvious dismay of the others, the half-elf cleared his throat and began to speak orcish to the creature. Hello, my large friend. Are you also here for the Thane's treasure? I believe I may be able to assist you if you allow a safe passage out. Initially offset by the slender half-breed's comments, the orc did engage him in conversation. What do you know of the treasure you speak of, elf? Tell me now or I will cut off your friend's head. The indignant tone caused the rest of the group to bristle and seeing the orc's blade inch closer to Karina's throat did little to calm anyone. I know that Thane Draco was rich and that his treasure is just beyond that wall, pointed out the bard. I know how to get to it, but first we want nothing more than to just leave in peace. Lady Irena spoke to Cabe in Elvish, asking him if he knew what he was doing. His response of, I think so, did little to bolster the confidence in the mage who was trying to determine what spell could deal with the situation and not injure the waif. Speak on, wood creature. Where is the treasure and how do I get it? growled the orc. Cabe slowly moved closer with his hands in the air and pointed to the wall behind the creature. The painting. Right there? The dwarf? It's a false door, said Cabe. I believe if you push on it, it will open and reveal the burial chamber of the ruler. This book says that untold riches lay within the hidden compartment. The orc grunted and waved for Cabe to toss him the book, which the half-elf did before stepping back with raised hands. The humanoid looked over the small tome, but it was readily apparent that he could not read it. The creature then grunted out, Traps? Cabe began to laugh before apology. No, no traps. We have already disarmed them in the other room. As you can clearly see, there are no traps listed in that document. The foul creature maintained his grip on Karina as he inched backwards towards the painting of the Dwarven Warrior. As he reached the wall, he pushed on it with his foot and the secret door inched in slightly. Surprised, the humanoid checked the party and told them not to move as he slowly pushed back against the wall opening the door even more. Cabe wiggled his hands and pointed out in Orcish that he was right and they just wanted to go home. In the common tongue, he told Karina to hold her position. Confused, she nodded slightly as the orc continued to push on the wall. Once the door was open, the humanoid checked on the surrendered party before turning and entering the doorway. Karina held her place as the orc leaned his head in and a large swishing noise was heard with the glint of a rusty blade passing through the secret doorway. A moment of silence passed and the knife being held against Karina fell with a clatter on the floor and the body of the orc tumbled into the secret chamber but was missing its head. A swinging scythe flipped back and forth in the opening several more times before coming to a rest in the door. Karina hazarded a look and jumped towards the party when she observed the orc was incapacitated. After a few moments, Kate burst into laughter and began to jump around. Did you see that? That was great! He never saw it coming! Still bewildered, the rest of the party looked at the gleeful bard in confusion. 
he went over to where the journal had fallen and picked it up. I knew there was a trap. The book said so. The broad smile on the bard quickly dissipated as Karina posed this question. What would have happened if you would have sent me through first? The anger in both her voice and face were evident, and Cabe stammered out an apology, admitting that he had not considered that as an option. The group shrugged off the issue and asked if the bard had any more information pertaining to additional traps. The bard quickly peeked back into the recovered journal and scanned the next few pages with a loud, hmm. The group looked to each member, seeing the same amount of anticipation and frustration on their faces. After several moments of silence, a flabbergasted Bulger the Sailor exclaimed, Well, what have you found? Puzzled, Cabe looked up to his associates and appeared to be concerned. The journal states that removing the treasure from within the crypt will lead to a cursed existence and, I quote, uh, Lo be he that defiles my tomb. But it doesn't go into any details to what kind of curse it is. That's it, nothing about the treasure. Sister Elaine spoke first, indicating that cursed was exactly, wasn't exactly what she was hoping for in her adventuring career, but Fargus took a different approach. <laughs> Curse my butt, there's no such thing. That's something everyone puts on every morning to keep people from stealing your stuff. I say we go in. Karina and Cabe both agreed, but Bulger seemed less enthusiastic. He began to tell a story about a man who didn't believe in curses called Three-Leg Pete, but he was interrupted by the group who felt that the storyline might not be conducive to all members of the group. He sat back down dejected that he could not finish his account. The group members then turned to Lady Irena. What say you, mage? asked the cleric. The elven woman thought for a moment and confirmed that she was aware that curses were real but augmented her opinion, stating that it probably wouldn't hurt to take a look inside the tomb and decide from there. A broad smile crossed the ranger's face and reconfirmed that there were no more known traps inside the next room. With confirmation given by the bard, Fargus gingerly extended one foot into the secret chamber and slowly ventured inside. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.